Today, the 400,000 people who live in Belfast have been wondering how it was possible that their orange parades passed off so peacefully, and wondering, now that this crisis is over, what's likely to be the next. In the past two weeks, an almost unbearable tension has built up here. Men have been killed, buildings burned down, as has happened so many times before. And it seemed that the legendary 12th of July couldn't be celebrated without yet another violent clash between the two communities of Protestants and Catholics. But Belfast now contains yet a third community with members everywhere. They're Protestant and Catholic and of no particular faith. They also have been in Ireland a very long time. And at present they seem to have the future of this city in their hands. They are, of course, the British Army. And it's under the protection of their guns that the other two communities live their separated lives. If credit is due to Protestants and Catholics for their good behavior this time, it's also due to the army for their massive presence over the weekend leading up to the 12th. Saturday morning and the army's build-up is now complete. Here at the top of the Bally Murphy estate in Belfast, troops have set up a command post in a school separating two sides of a deeply divided residential district. The religious geography is now clearly marked with all the familiar barricades and roadblocks. This is only one of several potential trouble spots in the city, only one of the areas where riot squads have recently faced mobs of teenage hooligans. Now, as the day of the big parade draws nearer, the security forces are tightening their grip and continual patrols are ready to report the first sign of violence. There are now more than 11,000 troops standing by in Northern Ireland. 7,000 of them in Belfast alone. They're equipped with ferret cars, Saracens, water cannons, CS gas and live ammunition. Overhead they can call on 12 spotter helicopters, some with loudspeakers to broadcast warnings to the crowds below. Eight troop carrying Wessex helicopters stand ready to airlift riot squads anywhere within minutes. This is the biggest internal security operation mounted in the United Kingdom for more than 50 years. But in the Protestant streets of Belfast, Saturday is also the start of the annual climax of loyalist fervour. It's particularly frenzied now because it seems to them that after the recent shootings and arms raids, the whole future of Ulster is now at stake. And ironically, this carnival spirit of no surrender is even good business as well. This is King Billy himself. That's a tea towel, a William Prince of Orange tea towel. A tea towel, yes. Uh, this was specially made for it. This is the Reverend Paisley himself. It's a bronze impression plaque. Very, very popular. And you had it specially made for this particular shop? Specially made. What about the woolly hats? I see behind you you've got one of those. Ah, yes. Television camera. I uh, had this made specially too. One of my country aunts made this. How's that? <laughs> They sell it about seven and six. They're very good. The colours are very bright, and anything that's bright and that has red, white, and blue, they'll wear. Meanwhile, in the Catholic Falls Road area, a visitor from south of the border has chosen this moment of Catholic tension and anxiety to canvas support. Thomas McGeeler is president of a movement regarded as subversive by both the Northern and Southern Ireland governments, Sinn Féin, the political arm of the IRA. Though his followers in Ulster come exclusively from the Catholic areas, Mr. McGeeler preaches a non-sectarian doctrine. Well, we have been telling them that uh, Catholic bigots are just as abhorrent as Protestant bigots, and if they know of any who intend to uh, disrupt any of the orange parades, that they should prevent them, uh, if possible in advance, or explain to them the damage they are doing. And this word has been passed around through the area. That there are certain people, undoubtedly, who have this bigoted attitude who may uh, endeavour to cause trouble. And uh, we hope that others who realise the damage this would do will prevent them from doing so. What would you say to any suggestion, coming perhaps from the Belfast authorities, that your visit was a form of provocation? Well, I think that would be outrageous, ridiculous. It would uh, be complete nonsense to say that you know, this would be a provocation because uh, the whole attitude of republicanism is totally opposed to sectarian strife. Sectarian or not, in the Falls Road, the Catholics are subdued and watchful as the Protestant bonfire celebrations are about to begin nearby. Till a few weeks ago, things seemed to be going well for the Catholics. Now they're not so sure. 
Many of them say they no longer see the British soldiers as their protectors. There are allegations that after the Falls Road shooting a few days earlier, soldiers looted and damaged houses. Hello, 1112 and 13, this is 1. The army's always been mystified, even demoralised by the abuse that's thrown at them from both sides. Here on Saturday night, an armoured car squadron from the 1721st Lancers sets out to patrol the Protestant area of Ballymacarrot in East Belfast. They've only been here a fortnight, but they know what to expect. Saturday night before the 12th in Protestant Belfast is always bonfire night. In this slum network of back streets, not far from the Catholic sector, dozens of piles of old furniture, planks and packing cases have been set alight. After the recent curfew on the Catholics, there's a general air of jubilation, but underneath, the mood is unpredictable. In East Belfast, men of the Royal Artillery have totally sealed off a community of 3,000 Catholics surrounded by Protestants. The soldiers are here in strength because only two weeks before, seven people died in a night-long gun battle. 1,500 rounds of ammunition were fired. Both sides claim the other started the shooting. The army say there is no way of knowing for sure. But they do know that many orange lodges are due to march within yards of these Catholic streets. Two o'clock on Sunday afternoon, and soldiers from one of the Scottish regiments in Belfast seal off a street in a Protestant area near the docks. They're searching for arms. Can you explain what's, what's going on here, please? There was a information given that there may be something that may have explosives in there which we've been looking for and that's all we found we haven't had a look in there we haven't found anything in fact. nothing at all in there no. after the scots soldiers climb out of the derelict pub they've been combing the street rapidly returns to its normal sunday afternoon appearance and this sunday the day before the big orange parades the Protestants are rehearsing with a series of church parades. Orange lodges from all over Belfast are going to separate services. The biggest is at the assembly hall of the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, a congregation of more than 2,000 Orangemen. God our Father, we thank thee that it is possible to walk with thee. We thank thee that there is a way back to thee from the dark path of sin. The Reverend Martin Smith, the county grand master for Belfast, took as his text the words of Jeremiah, I see a seething pot. He made no reference to the tensions of the forthcoming parade, but criticised most of the press, whom he called amateur commentators, and attacked the last Labour government. Their legislation, he said, was contrary to God's revealed word. The Christian knows that God is sovereign, he is on the throne, <clears throat> and as in days gone by he raised up Cyrus his anointed, a heathen king to bring his people under judgment and back to himself, God can do the same today, and when he has finished his purpose he can cast them aside and can make a new people to the glory of his name. Carlisle Circus, just north of the city centre in Belfast. Let's look at it. We've got Presbyterian Church there, another one further down, an Orange Lodge on the other side of the road. There's a Methodist Church here, and then further over on this side of the circus, there are one, two, three, four derelict shops, a Union Jack, and a large notice that says, Get Right With God. Well, this is where the main Orange Parade tomorrow starts and finishes. Nine o'clock on Monday morning, in the back room of 148 Snugville Street, just off the Crumlin Road. Orange Lodge number 1187 is being entertained by their master after a breakfast of Guinness and tea. Before they assemble, their treasurer makes sure that they've all paid up their four shilling monthly subscriptions, which will help charities and a dinner dance next month. This lodge has 30 full members and 36 juvenile members. The Orangeman's regalia is their proudest possession. Every detail has to be adjusted. The Bible in its cradle of orange ribbons, the orange bouquets tied to the poles of the banner. They all know that this is their big day, a demonstration of religious solidarity. 
what, what, what are your feelings about the, what is Catholic, my feeling? the Catholic people in the Falls Road area? He's a human being the same as me. I allow him to live, but he cannot live within the British Empire. He's out to break the British Empire. Still with all, he's getting the best living he can get in any part of the world. For the simple reason is this. They're getting public assistance, they're getting outdoor relief, they're getting family allowance, and they're getting everything, and they're not satisfied. They're not satisfied with that. They're dominating to break the British Empire, if possible, which they'll never do. And isn't the Roman Catholic and Protestant, this is a communist takeover bid. It is. And it's they are here, all. Uh, they are they, I should they'll say. They'll take but, over but, Northern right. Ireland. The same people are trying to take over Southern Ireland. And the Roman Catholics and Protestants will all... Losers. We so have given, really, in that, a way, that, that's, that's what you're going to march for today? We no, are, no, 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 we are marching no, no. the celebrating of the Battle of the Boyne, which we fought and died for, and our forefathers before us done the same. And we're going to follow their footsteps until the damn day which we go to the grave. Catholic leaders in Belfast claimed that this parade could only provoke violence. First, they demanded that it should be banned, and then that the Orange Order should make certain concessions. We have suggested to the security committee that they restrict the Orange Parade to the traditional route from Carlisle Circus to Finnehy Field. We have asked them that they do not allow bands to march to the assembly point through Catholic and sensitive areas, and similarly that when they disperse they shall not be allowed to march away back through Catholic areas. This is where the provocation occurs. And Mr. Connolly has nothing to talk about when one considers the amount of ammunition discovered in his headquarters. If you want to look for provocation, you'll get it. We are not going out to give anybody provocation. We're going out in dignified manner to remember the heritage which is ours and to reaffirm it and to declare we're maintaining it. Ten fifteen Monday morning, and the Grand Orange Lodge itself leads the way through the city to Finnegy Fields. Three hundred lodges and one hundred different bands altogether. Each of these men will march an average of fifteen miles, and the parade itself will take nearly three hours to beat its way through the city centre. It isn't till early afternoon that all the marchers and their followers reach Finnegy Field. The atmosphere is more relaxed than at any other time of the day. But the soldiers at the end of the road have more serious business to attend to. They are guarding the access to the adjoining Catholic estate. This is the moment for a fervent affirmation of the orange man's faith. Then comes the long march back. At the point where the marchers pass closest to the sealed off Catholics in East Belfast, the Protestant crowds wait to cheer. Behind the barricades, there's no cheering from the Catholics. The march passes by with no trouble. Are the Catholics relieved that the army are here? We're happy, yes. We're happy because the army present and giving peace, but we're getting pushed around by the army, we think. We're getting searched all the time, moving in and out of our districts. What do you think the attitude of the people in this tight community will be if this pressure and the curfew and so on continues? Trouble. A few minutes after midnight in the early hours of this morning, the Elsinore Hotel, just above Carlisle Circus, where the Orange Parade started. There's been a fire here after a bomb explosion. There was an explosion inside the hotel uh, at 8 minutes past 11, where an incendiary device was set off uh, inside the middle floor room, left-hand room, at the back. Uh, what, what kind of incendiary device was it, do you know? It was uh, a polythene bottle with petrol in it. Uh, they've since found another polythene bottle uh, containing petrol, and it's believed the first incendiary device was of the same type. 
Was anybody hurt? Nobody was hurt at all. And so Belfast has survived its greatest test. This time, no one was hurt, and the city was reasonably peaceful. But this was not so much the result of the good sense and the tolerance of the Protestant and Catholic communities. Peace has been maintained here because the people and their politicians have not been able to maintain it themselves, and the army has had to do it for them. In Belfast, local politics seem meaningless because the real power is obviously wielded by the army. And just how long the army can rule and just how long the people are willing to be ruled by the army is the biggest political question of all.